All right. So I just gave a brief introduction to the National Science Policy Network. Um, but at this point, I'll turn it over to Ankita, who has spearheaded this event. Um, she's a wonderful member of our Science Diplomacy Committee um, and has worked with Dr. De Oliveira to organize this event for us today. So go ahead and take it away, Ankita. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, it was my pleasure uh, to introduce you to uh, Dr. Imancio Yohore De Oliveira. He is a full professor at the Institute of International Relations of University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He, in addition, he's also the deputy director of the Museum of Ipiranga and most importantly, the scientific coordinator of the Innovation and Science Diplomacy School. With that, I would invite Dr. Oliveira to take on the floor and uh, share his in journey with all of us here. Uh, okay, uh, th thanks uh, so much for the invitation. I'm very, very glad and honored to share this experience on about inside, but also about uh, Brazilian foreign policy and uh, uh, science diplomacy program in Brazil. So I will share my presentation. Please let me know if uh, you can see well. Is that okay for you? You can see? Looks great. Okay, excellent. So I'm gonna tackle uh, the issue of science diplomacy in the global South, a Brazilian perspective. Uh, I will uh, put emphasis on the role of global South to Brazilian foreign policy, first of all, and then the state of art of initiative of science diplomacy and innovation diplomacy in Brazil and also in Latin America. And I'm going to finish, finish with some recommendation about that. So uh, in a key, key way, a key way session, we can talk about uh, inside uh, and uh, the experience of this summer school at Brazil as a global South country uh, giving training on science diplomacy, the challenging and the advancing. So let me start with the first part, uh, the global South in Brazilian foreign policy, saying that the Brazilian used to have two most important pillars in, in, the, in the Brazilian foreign policy. First was regionalism. Uh, uh, when I say regionalism, I'm, I'm talking about the priority of South America and Mercosur. Uh, and the second one, the multilateralism. I'm mean, talking about WTO and other uh, international organization, trade and, and other areas. Uh, it's going to move gradually, uh, change to global south as uh, center of pillar of Brazilian foreign policy do it to the laws of dynamism uh, on regionalism and multilateralism. So regionalism and multilateralism facing problem. Brazil changed a little bit uh, his uh, emphasis on uh, foreign policy and give more emphasis on South-South relation. You're going to see some empirical data about, about that. And translate that in concrete uh, uh, policy, you're going to say that Brazilian mediation between Global South and Global North as a middle power agenda. It was became a pillar for our uh, foreign policy. And also the leadership, leadership of international coalition, meaning IPSA, BRICS, and uh, Mercosul and other, other coalition. So uh, the, the meaning, the importance of the, the, this international coalition for our foreign policy uh, is different, depends on the, the moment, but in general, you can say that Mercosur represent for the Brazilian foreign policy, uh, uh, the economic interdependence between among uh, Mercosur countries. Uh, the IBSA, the meaningful of IBSA for Brazil is symbolic and normative, doing the fact that uh, the IBSA, uh, the members of the IBSA, IBSA uh, uh, were pretty much democracy. And uh, BRICS, the, uh, the, the role of BRICS to Brazilian foreign policy is to obtain uh, assets to global governance. Uh, in, in, in the first moment uh, of uh, with uh, soft uh, balance, 
and the move it to hard balance because of the enlargement. So Mercosur suffered superficialization. And <clears throat> right now is the election we, uh, of uh, Millet, uh, 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 right uh, wings uh, in uh, Argentina, tend to be uh, worse in terms of uh, uh, functionality. So Mercosur is going to suffer with political mismatch. It's going to be very, very severe, I, I can imagine. Of course, uh, Millet can uh, move and change his policy, but uh, the, the trend is to be very hard, the relationship between Brazil and Argentina, uh, the, the, the pillars council of Mercosur. Ibiza was uh, diluted uh, completely. There is no functionality no longer. But BRICS, uh, with enlargement, change uh, uh, radically the role in, in terms of international, uh, uh, in terms of Brazilian foreign policy. Now, probably you can see uh, BRICS as a hard balance because the military uh, 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 became an important mission for Brazil also. This moment, consider the position of Brazil in terms of uh, uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine uh, conflict and the others conflict uh, also. So uh, the, the the correspondence of these uh, uh, pillars of Brazilian foreign policy to science diplomacy is not immediate. I mean, uh, uh, despite the fact that Mercosur, IPSA and uh, BRICS, uh, they are uh, important uh, international coalition. It it not means that Brazil has a strong uh, science uh, science diplomacy with these countries, with exception maybe with exception with China. Brazil is increasing international cooperation with China, but is still uh, the most important European uh, relationship, international cooperation, scientific cooperation with European Union and uh, U.S. So there is a mismatch between the priority of Brazilian foreign policy and science diplomacy, and it, it has some impact on, of uh, the, the consolidation of science diplomacy in Brazil, as I'm going to show, show you in a few moments. So uh, we create an index to understand the importance of Brazil in terms of global south and global north. The index is composed by international trade, votes in UN, embassies, uh, bilateral treaties, cooperation programs, and several uh, several uh, uh, factors that compose the in index to understand the evolution of importance of Brazil uh, in global south and global north. And the result is like this, uh, that one. We can uh, uh, follow uh, the evolution of importance of Brazil uh, foreign policy toward global south and global north. And the results shows that in the second, uh, in the period of the PT work party, Lula's moment, uh, the importance of global, global south uh, overcome the global north, as you can see in that in dash, dash line, the first one. Uh, the, the another evidence is the fact that the global south uh, uh, reached the, this peak in the second administration of Lula. But the idea that Lula neglected the, the global north uh, relationship was completely wrong because the, uh, the global north increased also uh, uh, following the global south. Of course, global south is much more important than global north, but uh, the global north was important also. And the, in the moment of uh, Dilma Rousseff, uh, uh, after Lula administration, uh, it decreased, the, 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 the decline, the relationship, even in global south, global south and global north. Uh, and now we have, this is the first time that we are presenting this date, uh, including the two uh, new administrations. Here we can see Fernando Henrique Cardoso, Lula, uh, Lula 1, Lula 2, and uh, Dilma Rousseff uh, with this uh, decline in terms of uh, importance of global south and global north. Uh, and the first time we are presenting the Temer government, 
in the low level of uh, international relation, uh, Global North became a little bit more important. And in case of Bolsonaro, both Global North and Global South declined, uh, decreased strongly. So the relationship between uh, uh, Brazil and other countries uh, under Bolsonaro was very, very, very low uh, level. So uh, the tendency, the trend is uh, with Lula tree at this moment, uh, uh, back again to the important role in international arena. So let's see, let's see what happens, but our hypothesis is that Lula will become uh, again important in terms of international arena. So uh, in terms of uh, literature review, uh, some of these, uh, these reference I can send for you, the presentation, if you want, it's gonna be a pleasure. Uh, this reference shows that uh, science diplomacy in Latin America has some assets and some deficits, of course, which is the assets. Uh, when I say Latin America and include Brazil, of course, uh, the growing importance of soft, soft, uh, science diplomacy, the awareness uh, is becoming better, the growth, the number of initiatives and in, in the capacity building program, training programs is increasing in Latin America, as I'm going to show uh, uh, a few moments. Uh, the level of development in, in terms of the ecosystem, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, there is heterogeneity on that, Sao Paulo is probably the most uh, uh, important ecosystems in terms of science and innovation. It's uh, a very disproportional the level of uh, evolution in terms of ecosystem in Sao Paulo compared to the other parts of Brazil and of course the other countries except Chile and maybe some places in Argentina. And the fact that uh, the region uh, is free of, uh, from major conflict. So this is the asset in terms of science diplomacy. So this is mapping. I Again, I'm gonna send to you, but this is the mapping of uh, initiative in science diplomacy, we have here about 30 initiatives, but uh, I just want to give you emphasis on the fact that this initiative is uh, pretty much on mobility, training, and academic uh, initiative. We have a few initiatives on governmental initiative. For instance, here in Brazil, you can see innovation diplomacy program. Brazil, don't, Brazil doesn't have science diplomacy program, official science diplomacy program, but there is uh, innovation uh, diplomacy. Uh, science attache at same here in Uruguay with tech consulate in the US, Inter-America Institute is important supranational initiative also. So, but pretty much on mobility, uh, education uh, uh, and training programs uh, in Latin America. Uh, the, when we move to deficit in terms of science diplomacy in Latin America and Brazil, uh, the first evidence is the fact that initiative uh, tends to be with low level or low degree of institutionalization. Uh, the case of Brazil, as I, I mentioned, uh, we have a stronger program on, I don't say strong, there is no much money or that, but this is an important program on innovation diplomacy, nothing about science diplomacy. And that this is a, a def, important death for us, for Latin America and for Brazil. And the second one is the fact that we don't have, as you guys have in the US, in Canada, in, in, in England, uh, permanent scientific advisory system. Our system is ad hoc ad hoc system, which means that when we have international crisis, we engage uh, th uh, scientists to uh, propose uh, a, a solution with the problem. You don't have a system, a permanent scientific advisor board, which is uh, uh, pretty bad. Uh, uh, but in compensation, we have embedded science Diplomacy with scientists at the govern government. What I what I what I mean is that we have scientists that is invited to be a minister, a minister to be secretary inside the government. 
but the board of scientific advisor, you don't have it. So uh, not even in under uh, federal level. So it's a uh, it's a pitch of uh, inside try to implement this sort of permanent scientific advisor in Brazilian government. The heterogeneity of uh, ecosystem of innovation, the superficialization of regional integration process with political mismatch, and I was told in a little bit uh, uh, later. Uh, the the complication of uh, the election of Argentina on that it trying to be uh, worse uh, in this case and the fact that the uh, the, go the the dominance of global north in the relationship of of, of uh, academic cooperation so that's why we are discussing the colonial agenda with a technological transfers payment of royalties access of scientific information, so on and so forth. So uh, the mapping of uh, our 21 uh, uh, initiative on, on science diplomacy, we can see that it is placed on health. Health of this initiative, A, B, and C, is uh, with low level of internationalization. The health of them are with a uh, uh, strong level of institutionalization. When I say level of institutionalization, I mean uh, tools of foreign policy, uh, the, the use of uh, science diplomacy with subsidies for foreign policy. We have some of these initiatives and also international organization and supranational programs. Uh, our first uh, recommendation is moving uh, soft institutionalization to hard institutionalization. We have some, but it's still uh, not, not enough to consolidate science diplomacy and innovation diplomacy in Latin America and Brazil. Uh, when we see these diagrams, I know it's very uh, note, uh, 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 you, you know uh, uh, well this uh, scheme, but just to say that Brazil has uh, a strong diplomacy for science, uh, science for diplomacy, considered that academy and university in Brazil is very strong. Uh, USP is uh, uh, probably the best uh, university in Brazil. And in Latin America, we have a strong science for diplomacy, but we still have a little bit weak uh, science in diplomacy using subsidy, to uh, governmental uh, policy. We need to be better on this uh, uh, dimension. Uh, in terms of challenge, I just to, again say the biggest challenge for us. One is to uh, become better in terms of institutionalization and the idea of global North dominance. Uh, we have a symmetry agreement, very uh, unbalanced in terms of her responsibility and the, also in terms of a technological transfer. We need to tackle this problem in our science diplomas and innovation diplomas. Uh, here, oh, we have some steps in terms of be become better uh, science diplomas. One of the more, more most important for me is the engage of private sector. Uh, we can engage government, we can engage uh, university, we can engage uh, NGO, but private sector uh, tends to not be engaged in sort of this uh, mobility program in terms of qualification, uh, uh, capacity building, so we need to uh, make it better. Uh, and to just to finalize uh, some recommendation, first is to implement some macro level policy in science diplomacy, again, we have innovation diplomacy, but not in science diplomacy. We can discuss that. Why is that in Brazil and why government uh, didn't uh, uh, promote a science diplomacy program? Uh, but yes, in terms of uh, innovation diplomacy, replace the idealistic approach to realistic approach based on national and regional interests, uh, and also uh, use uh, uh, science diplomacy as, as tool uh, and our instrument to reduce, reduce inequality. And to uh, the last one, I would say increase bilateral and regional scheme of science diplomacy to compensate the global north 
power of bargain in terms of uh, 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 international cooperation scheme uh, in science and innovation, we need to be desperately. But the bad news again is the fact that Mercosul and another South America scheme is become weak because of this political uh, mismatch. And uh, just to finish, say a little bit about inside uh, Innovation Science Diplomacy School, I was saying uh, be, be, uh, before I started the, my, my conference, say that we offer uh, about hundreds of, hundred of scholarship uh, health to Brazilian and health to abroad uh, research, uh, post PG uh, doctorate students to come to Brazil uh, to give training on science diplomas and innovation diplomas, and also to know University of São Paulo, different areas uh, of University of São Paulo, who have some international project on uh, on uh, about scientific data circulation. But uh, I, I don't think it's interesting to talk about that. Most important to talk about uh, inside, which is maybe the first uh, big uh, initiative in Global South training in science diplomacy and innovation diplomacy. Thank you very much. I'm open for our discussion. Thanks a lot, Dr. Oliveira, for <laughs> sorry for the insights. It was really um, enlightening. Um, I would like to start up with a few questions and then uh, I would encourage the audiences if they have questions, please um, raise your hands and then uh, we'll ask you to unmute and then you can ask your uh, questions to Dr. Oliveira. The first one that I want to kind of start with, which is kind of a natural extension to the place where you ended your discussion, <laughs> Sorry. is <clears throat> on the Innovation and Science Diplomacy uh, program. Can you speak as to what makes a applicant competitive for the program and what are you looking in an applicant when you screen the applications during the selection procedure? Sure. Uh... The most important feature of the applic applicant is uh, the fact that uh, research on a post PhD program and they show some experience on science diplomacy or uh, interest on science diplomas because you don't want just a research on chemical physics. Uh, we 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 accept all areas. It's not necessary to be from law school or international relation, but uh, it's important to have some sensibility in terms of how to promote science diplomacy through from uh, their perspective. If I'm a chemistry or biologist, I I I I, I need to 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 uh, have interest on on science diplomacy. So we uh, apply a letter saying why you are doing this uh, cap capacity building. So the level of uh, uh, the quality of uh, 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 research is important, of course. The level in terms of uh, post PhD is uh, pretty much uh, uh, the most important uh, factor feature on the application and the the disposition of to be. Uh, ambassador to uh, uh, to have connection with diploma to be open for this uh, human science uh, experience. Sure. Yeah, and we at NSPN kind of focus on that a lot as well. So glad to hear that. I will take a second one and then uh, we'll go to an audience question. Um, <laughs> sorry yeah I think the second one that I kind of wanted to ask is can you speak to the recent development that has happened with the uh, uh, constitution of the BRICS countries and what role these multilateral diplomatic uh collaborations play a role in uh, 
decreasing global South's dependency to the Western world. So uh, there is different level of development on on the BRICS uh, policy. Uh, some some of them are make 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 a, a very good job in financial, for instance. Uh, the idea of change dollar as uh, 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 most important coins in the international exchange, for instance, uh, uh, in terms of uh, international organization representative, it's in uh, BIBS uh, or, or BRICS tackle this sort of uh, agenda or so. But uh, in other areas, I mean, trade, and scientific uh, uh, collaboration, BRICS is not doing a good job. So, uh, but I guess with this enlargement of BRICS, we're gonna face problem with US, for instance. When we when we invite Iran, when we invite uh, another countries uh, with different perspective in terms of international uh, relations, we're gonna face with pro problem with uh, European Union and the US. So we are make some progress, but in other areas we didn't uh, make any progress. For instance, in, in terms of trade. Um, I'll ask the next question. Um, thank you so much for your talk, Dr. Oliveira. Um, I was wondering if you could expand a bit more about the um, Innovation uh, and Science Diplomacy School and just, I guess, describe um, like what a participant could expect to learn from the program, um, when it occurs, how long is the program, and things like that. Thanks a lot for this question which gives me opportunity to talk a little bit more about inside but inside the uh, two week programs that we offer every year and uh we try to uh, give a uh, scholarship to uh, our participants which is a big challenge because it's very expensive of course uh but the idea of the school the training and the capacity building is to it is to offer a uh, uh, base on science diplomacy and the innovation from. So every school will have first part of the, 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 the school present concept theory, uh, advanced on science diplomacy and innovation diplomacy. What is innovation of inside you is the fact that we put same emphasis on science diplomacy with innovation diplomacy. I mean, uh, some uh, schools uh, abroad uh, tends to focus much more on science diplomacy and neglect the innovation diplomacy. Uh, inside uh, uh, doesn't do that. We have some uh, importance for both. But uh, this is the common uh, uh, topics on every school, but we, we tend to change every year uh, the substantive issues. Uh, this year, I think, uh, 2022, uh, 20, uh, we give emphasis on, <clears throat> on that scientific data circulation. The next year will be about uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So every year we change the topic, the substantive topic, <clears throat> but the perspective of, about this topic is on science diplomas. We have, we use case uh, uh, linking, for instance, uh, artificial intelligence to science diplomas, uh, uh, trying to use this experience to explain this sort of uh, concept. So this is the idea of the, the school. We ran it for five years with support of FAPESP, the Sao Paulo uh, Foundation, but we don't have guarantee that the next year you, you get the money. So every year you need to apply for the money and then decide if you're going ahead uh, with this school or not. That's why, again, it's so important to engage private sector. Otherwise, uh, we do not uh, have sustainability to the school. I hope I, I have answered your question.
Yes, thank you. Um, is there any questions from the participants? Okay, I, okay. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, yeah, I see that you're raising your hand. So you can unmute, unmute yourself and ask your question if you want to. Thank you. Um, uh, thank, thank you, Professor, for your uh, very nice presentation. Uh, my question is related to the to the role of uh, so Brazil is a member of the community of uh, Portuguese speaking countries, and so my question was, uh, in your opinion, uh, do you see any potential for science diplomacy in this uh, community of Portuguese speaking countries? Thank you. Yes, it's a uh, high potential on that, but we are not uh, using this potential. Uh, I, I participated uh, today in a meeting at uh, the Central Administration for University of Sao Paulo. Uh, they gave us the information that we create a program for postgraduate students from Angola. USP will bring about a hundred uh, students from Angola to make their PhD at USP with a scholarship. So I think it's the first time we have some structure program on that, but we have some small program uh, financed with CNPq, CAPS, but now at USP we have a strongest uh, program. The potential is very, very high, but the the difficult that is to have counterparts on financial uh, uh, in international collaborative program because USP or, or Brazilian side has money to do that, but counter side is not uh, possible to do that. So that is imbalance, and uh, uh, this is a, a, a problem, but we are... Uh, uh, get over with this uh with financial from for past spend from USP. Karina. Um thank you for your intervention and for um what you've shared with us. Um I have a, a question regarding you know science and diplomacy um with a specific example so I'm gonna put my example First, so um, la Brazil led conversations this year on a rainforest pact that resulted in the Belen Declaration, that is a collaboration among the eight Amazon countries in terms of sustainable development and conservation. And the treaty is um, bringing back the Amazon Cooperation Treaty Organization, which was dormant for some time. And now this organization will host a scientific panel that will create um, an annual report on how things are developing in terms of conservation um, and, and sustainable development in all these countries. Uh, but the, the scientists have sound the alarm that if we lose any more of the Amazon rainforest, it's gonna probably go into savanization and we're gonna lose that uh, that very important um, resource for all the world. So um, interestingly, the treaty doesn't directly address any oil exploitation or mining in the Amazon region. So I was wondering if you could react to, um, you know, these types of treaties that although they involve a lot of um, science and diplomacy, they don't necessarily address directly these issues that can be seen more as uh, political and and in the independent to, you know, the, the development of countries um, in, independently of, of what the region does. Thank you. Excellent question. I'm not specialized on, on uh, environmental and uh, this sort of uh, issues, but what I can say is that it's a very uh, surprising for us. And I I guess that uh, is the reason that we are not tackled this 
with a scientific uh, background is the fact that with this new government, uh, the the results of in Amazon is so bad than the last one government. So we have bad results on that. So that's why even with this uh, agenda, the importance of environmental, so on and so forth, we are not able to stop burning uh, Amazon. So that's why I I think government, Brazilian government is so ca cautious on attack this problem, tackle this problem, international arena, and uh, 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 make uh, compromise in terms of treaties. Brazil is defensive on that. Maybe in the future you're going to change, but it's not happening that moment. Uh, so let's put that on the behind the scenes. That that's my hypothesis. Unfortunately, I'm I'm sorry to say that. Thank you. Perfect. We'll take a little break from the audience questions and then jump. Uh, on with one of mine and then we can uh, ask if there's something else from the audience popping up. <laughs> Dr. Oliveira, um, uh, could you shed some more light on the innovation diplomacy program that was started by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brazil a few years ago and what were the motivations behind that program and a few success stories that directly came from that program? Sure, it's a pleasure. Uh, Brazil, in, in our ambassadors in, in, uh, in, in abroad, developed a program to uh, internationalization of our startups and also uh, use uh, our research abroad in connection with private sector and Brazil. Diaspora, we have a strong diaspora, scientific diaspora. So we have do, two good assets. First is possibility to uh, make internationalization in terms of our startup, putting in connection with uh, business sector abroad. And another is use our uh, asset in terms of uh, uh, our research abroad. So uh, the idea is to put some money in the uh, uh, embassies abroad to make this sort of uh, connections, uh, matching point uh, 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 with uh, researchers and private sector, putting emphasis again in uh, startups. We, ha we had that with India, with China, but I think the most important program is, is India. Uh, I would say that is the most important South-South uh, relation program between Brazil and India, but it's maybe it's because uh, Pedro Ivo, which is uh, also executive coordination of Inside, was in uh, India promoting that. I hope it's it, it's a program continuous, uh, but it is a very important program. So if I need to, if I need to. Uh, uh, present a uh, successful program on innovation diplomacy, I would say that Brazilian and India uh, cooperation is one of them. Uh, I saw I saw that uh, someone put the 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 link of homepage of inside over there. Every year, this uh, homepage change with the uh, new programming program. Um, Kesia, um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, do you want me to ask your question, or do you want me? Uh, uh, or you do you want to unmute yourself? I can unmute myself. Um, I wanted to know if you could please elaborate more on ways science diplomacy can be used on a tool to combat inequality. Uh, as a tool of uh, foreign policy, you mean? You know, as a tool um, to combat inequality. Ah, inequality. Yeah. Ah, sure, 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 sure. sure. Uh, Brazil, uh, for instance, uh, has a stronger program on on, on combating uh, of inequality. 
uh, Fome Zero, uh, several programs uh, in terms of uh, public policy capability. Uh, and we can use uh, our structure of diplomacy structure to export this sort of program to Africa, for instance. Embrapa is very, very strong on agricultural uh, technological program. So we can use our diplomas to export this sort of program. So which you have in, uh, uh, as an accent, uh, we can export that using our uh, uh, diplomacy uh, uh, channels. So it's uh, one of example that you can use that. Another is electron, uh, elect, elect, electoral uh, system we are have very developed that we can export that also using our diplomas to promote uh, uh, electoral and democracy, the technological use of democracy to another kind. So that sort of uh, uh, use of tools uh, in terms of reducing inequality uh, along the road. I don't know if you're convincing that, but it's, uh, it's, our, it's our pitch. Uh, Lauren, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about um, Brazil's just broad foreign policy when it comes to artificial intelligence and, um, and data diplomacy and how that interacts with um, the innovations happening elsewhere around the world. Uh, oh, it is very green. Uh, program, uh, I would not much to say uh, uh, now, but uh, we are we are very worried about the impact of uh, artificial intelligence in terms of creation of uh, market uh, in, employee. Uh, we are seeing in Brazil, I don't know, probably in the US also, that we are uh, uh, taking off jobs uh, we use intensive use of um, uh, artificial intelligence. So we need to uh, see some regulation, international regulation, to reduce uh, the bad impact of international arti uh, artificial intelligence in Brazil and uh, in developing countries. Uh, we are discussing that regulation uh, the way of mitigate the impact of uh, artificial intelligence. But I would say that we are in first step on this sort of discussion. Unfortunately, we are promoting this, now, this school next year with this core and bring specialists on that to discuss the sort of international regulations. Um, I um, would like to kind of uh, ask around what are the efforts uh, that have been undertaken by uh, Brazil and science diplomacy uh, to engage with Brazilian diaspora that's, that's, uh, that uh, is present across different continents and how, what role do you think Brazilian diaspora plays in larger uh, diplomacy efforts? Well, uh, one, 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 one of the big challenges for uh, our uh, uh, science is uh, to increase the impact abroad, to make good connections with uh, developed countries, uh, uh, consolidated uh, uh, scientific uh, centers. The diaspora can put in connection, connection between uh, a north global north center with uh, a, a global south with Brazil, because they are there. They they understand better the regulation, how to do that, how to make research. So uh, forget it, neglected the role of the diaspora is a big mistake, and uh, diplomacy 
the first the first uh, 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 role, the first uh, challenge of diplomacy is to know who who are there, who are there and making what, who are are good at, uh, uh, scientists abroad mapping uh understand where uh what they are doing and put in connect with our academy so that's why this program was so successful also but again the money is not enough to do that the embassies the minister of foreign relations needs to to have more money to put this uh uh scientists in connections I guess uh, we can take one last question. Is uh, anybody up for a last uh, audience question? I have, um, I put a question in the chat, but I can um, read it out loud. Um, you highlighted engagement with the private, private sector as probably like the most important step to increase the impact of science diplomacy. But uh, there were also other um, aspects that you highlighted in those seven steps, including uh, regional network and synergies of regional organizations. Could you elaborate on how do you see those synergies and networks working? Uh, I would say that the only pro step fellow program uh, in science diplomacy is inter dialogue. Uh, we can use, we can have much more on that. But for doing that, we need to uh, to have uh, private sector finance this program and also sharing experience with the staff fellow. It's not enough to come to Brazil or Uruguay or Argentina and stay in the academy. They need to know, know private sector, business sectors. And for, for doing that, they need to be engaged in this sort of training and capacity build. Otherwise, you you you're gonna have a good experience in an academy, but not in terms of the private sector. So that's why, uh, in terms of money, re funding raise, but also in terms of share experience. The problem is that our relationship with private sector in Brazil is very, it's a little bit bad. It's a bit dif difficult to do that. I know that in US is different. They 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 have much stronger connection with the academy. I I I can imagine. You, you 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 say if I'm I'm lying, <laughs> or I no? Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. I'm um, I'm part of the step fellowship too, so I I have learned a great deal of how you know of, of different of what is transferable from the U.S. perspective into the uh, Latin American and Caribbean perspective. So I I appreciate that. Thank you. Perfect. With this, I will pass on to Lauren, the Science Diplomacy Chair, for wrapping this event up. Thank you, Akita, and thank you, Dr. Oliveira, for generously spending your time with us and telling us about Brazilian science diplomacy and the various training opportunities available for young, uh, young STEM professionals. Um, I think we all learned a lot today. Um, and at this point, I would like to highlight some upcoming opportunities that are coming up with the NSPN Science Diplomacy Committee, um, particularly our upcoming Science Diplomacy 101 event happening next Thursday um, on December 14th. It's occurring from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, um, 5 to 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, and this is one of our best events of the year because it's a it's what it sounds like it's an introduction to science diplomacy so if you're relatively new to the field and the concept then come to this event we'll go over the basics define the field for you and show you concrete examples of how science and diplomacy intersect in the real world and um, you'll have the opportunity to hear from several science diplomacy professionals um, and learn about their career trajectories and be able to talk to them um, in small groups and breakout rooms. So this is a great opportunity to kind of survey the field of science diplomacy um, and see where people have gone, um, who used to be in your shoes, 
um, and what sorts of exciting work can be done in the field. We also have um, one of NSPN's main opportunities open at the moment. Um, our Science Diplomacy Fellowship is accepting applications. So this is a hands-on experiential learning opportunity that NSPN offers for science diplomacy. And in this fellowship, um, participants get placed in a diplomatic office um, to gain hands-on experience working on science diplomacy related projects. So this is a really cool opportunity. Um, I think we take um, one cohort a year. So um, be sure to apply if you're interested in gaining this, um, this sort of experience. Applications close next week on December 11th. Um, so be sure to check that out. Um, apart from that, um, we also have our December committee meeting coming up. So you can also check out the um, NSPN events page for that if you want to stay engaged with the Science Diplomacy Committee here. Um, and with that, we can wrap up today's event. Um, the recording will be posted to YouTube if you would like to rewatch it. Um, or share it with some friends who couldn't make it today. Um, so with that, thank you so much, Dr. Oliveira, for joining us today. And for everyone who attended, this was really wonderful. And I can't wait to keep learning more with everyone about um, science diplomacy in the future.